So let me turn to the, uh, to the metal work. Um, what I've tried to do, which um, is not easy to do, but I've tried to put a timeline to Knox's designs. and tried very much to show, even in that six-year period, how he emerged himself as a good designer to a great designer of metalwork. And so first of this is in time order. So you have here some of his very earliest work and the very earliest work that can exist in the Kumrit range, and we, we know that from date hallmarks in silver. And you get these relatively, well, quite complicated, but simple buckles in this very first period of the range. No enamels. Uh, you have pieces that are named, often named by Manx names, which we therefore help us associate them to Knox. And you can see those designs, and all these are pictures are on the stand, I should say. You then have, a, maybe six months later, not very much later, you have, again, still quite plain designs, but you have perhaps um, slightly stronger designs. You have these Conister candlesticks, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. One of the, uh, the, feature, one of the designs that actually obscured Knox, far from promoting him. You have the Conister candlesticks, and now you have the Olaf clock. Uh, again, we found the design drawing with something called the Sigurd, very much Knox-like, which that isn't in Moda, named Olaf, which is a king of the Isle of Man. So we very much think that is Knox's work. If you turn to the Conister, and I'll just dwell on this, this is one of the factors that obscured Knox. Uh, um, and on the right is a picture. It's uh, in the studio, the most influential and widely read international design magazine of the period. For the studio to carry the photo just said how good they thought it was, and they talked about it. But of course, who's there, and I'm not sure you can read it, it says by RC, that's Rex Silver, who ran the Silver Studios. And that helped obscure Knox for perhaps 100 years, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I think now we have no doubts it's by, by Knox. Um, the design at the top has all, all his hallmarks, I mean, unequivocally. I think we know Rex Silver, who was a very young man at this time, wasn't designing probably anything. Uh, but in addition, and I've put it on the left, is the Conister. It's a folly of a lighthouse, I believe, off, just off the coast of uh, the Isle of Man. And of course, the Conister candlesticks are unlikely to be named by someone other than from the Isle of Man who's heard of it. And I have to say, as I put this together, I did wonder if there wasn't a design cue from the lighthouse to the candlestick, but that may just be uh, an illusion of the light, but that I could see a similarity. Moving on, you then have Knox's uh, period, really from 1900 all the way through. And this is, of course, what he's most famous for. He's really seen as the British Art Nouveau designer, the man who introduced Celtic Art Nouveau into Britain, or made it really what it was, and had his own unique take on Art Nouveau. And there's no, no doubting that. These are two, I mean, just stunning examples of his work and the different sorts of Celtic knots he introduced. Uh, this is, a, we know the date of this, of course, because it's a coronation spoon. Um, and, and this is a Kubrick in, in, well, probably designed around 1902. And it's, I, I was going to use the word mad, but it's this kind of fantasy of enamels and silver. I mean, absolutely beautiful. And on this page, I've just highlighted, he didn't just have one Celtic knot. Uh, he had any number, but most are recognizable <laughs> in time, but uh, from a certain kink in the way he does the elbow. Uh, but I've highlighted here, I would say, that design, which is off the cigar box in the stand, that's probably the least like Knox. It might be Knox, it might be an adaptation, but that's the most literal, he, he, if it is his, he ever got. And unlike the Glasgow School, uh, or Iona, uh, Alexander Ritchie, a designer from Iona, who very much embraced the Celtic theme, they were very literal in the way they did their knots, very much harking back in time to those Gaelic knots. And he, he was influenced, I think, by Art Nouveau, and he did a different, a different form. Uh, and it just, it's just that much more lively and, frankly, much more original. <laughs> 